Hello everybody, uh, Mr. K here, checking in. Hope all is well with everyone. Uh, second week, no school due to this uh, coronavirus situation. I hope everyone's been smart and been safe um, with everything. Uh, today, what I'm gonna do is a book read called Here's Hank. Um, one thing I am going to try to do more of is post some more videos of lessons and book reads is going to be part of that as well. So what I would do is I'll read the book and then if you guys would like, you can go find a book yourself. So look at it online. I think it's a great read. Um, I'll try to do this once a week until we are back in school. So hopefully we'll be back in school next week uh, if all goes well. That's what I hope. Um, but here it goes. Here's Hank. All right, author is Henry Winkler and Lynn Oliver. They are New York Times best-selling authors, so that's pretty dope. All right, so chapter one is somewhere in here. All right, Hank, my sister Emily yelled as she ran up to me and grabbed my arm. You have to come meet Ginger. She's the cutest snake I've ever seen. Emily, I said, long slimy reptiles with no eyelids or ears are not cute. They're creepy. Ginger's not slimy. Her skin is dry. Come pet her. I don't pet snakes or anything else that could eat me. Hold for lunch. Our family was spending the morning at West End Avenue Street Fair. The whole block was lined with booths selling everything from blueberry muffins to tube socks. Leave it to Emily to find the one snake booth. That girl can sniff out a reptile better than my dog Cheerio. Can sniff out a hunk of pot roast on the dining room table. Ignore Emily, I headed for the booth that was selling cool comic books. Emily stood there and stopped her foot. Mom, Dad, she whined. This isn't fair. We just spent 20 minutes waiting for Hank to taste every flavor of ice cream. We knew he was going to pick cherry vanilla all along. Now the family should do something I want to do. Emily has a point, Hank, my mom said. I think we should go all say hello to Ginger the snake. Fine, I muttered, but I'm not touching her with any part of my body. I'll use my eyes and that's it. We walked over to a huge purple sign that read Ralph's Reptile Show. Under the sign, there was a table with some reptiles displaying in different kinds of glass tanks. A giant tortoise was sitting in the middle. Other table, and when I say giant, I mean giant. That guy's shell was as big as my bathroom sink. In the front of the table was a wrap himself, a long orange yellow black striped snake wrapped around his arm. There's Ginger, Emily screamed. All right, so here's Ralph with his snake around his arm, the giant turtle, and different animals inside their cages. Hi, Emily, Ralph said. Oh, I see you brought your family over to meet Ginger. They're all so excited to meet her, Emily said, reaching out to stroke Ginger's long back. Make that all but one of us, I added quickly. I hope this doesn't hurt your feelings, Ralph, but I'm not a big snake pet. Well then, maybe I can interest you in Clyde, my snow leopard gecko, Ralph said, or Boris, my adorable blue tail skink. Okay, I don't even know what a skink is, but it sounds too close to stink for me to even consider petting it. Ralph was wearing a tan floppy hat that looked like his head had sweat in it for the last 100 years. He had a brown shirt on and shorts, brown construction boots, and a shirt with a million pockets and zippers. Maybe that's where he keeps his things. Is that the tourist, is that tourist in my life? I asked Ralph. He's not moving. You mean Speedy? Ralph pinned the tourist bumpy head with two fingers. He's probably just thinking about the lettuce leaf he had for lunch. If you want a little more excitement, you should get to know Ginger. She's a hoot. Ralph moved his arms so that Ginger's face was very close to, his, to my nose. Maybe it wasn't very close, but it was close enough for me to jump way back. Look at Hank, Emily laughed, afraid of a little snake. I'm not afraid exactly, I told her. I just don't want 
I just don't happen to love snakes the same way you do. Maybe I'm not an animal person. You love Cheerio, don't you? Of course, but Cheerio's a dog, which means you can play ball with him and take him for a walk. Last time I checked, they don't make leashes for snakes. Snakes are very sweet in their own way, Ralph said. Take Ginger, for instance. She's a mud snake. She loves children. She's a big hit at kids' birthday parties. Wow, Emily said. I wish she could come to mine. It's coming up so. I already sent the invitation to everything. Ralph reached down to a stack of brochures he had on the table and handed my dad one. I bring my reptile show to lots of kids' birthday parties, he said, and I'll be happy to come to Emily's. That's the deal, Emily said. I'm going to call everyone I've invited and let them know that there's a new theme to my party. Everyone, everybody else has a princess dressed up party. Nobody has had snakes before. That's because kids don't like to attend the birthday parties with creatures whose jaws unlock so they can swallow a birthday cake whole, I said. I don't care what you think, Hank. It's my party. Hold up there, Emily, my dad said, putting the brochure in his back pocket. We have a lot to discuss here. And we should do that on the way home, my mom said, taking Emily's hand to lead her away from Ralph. See you soon, Emily, called out Ralph. Tell Ginger I'll make her a special party hat for her. We'll have to see about that, my dad whispered to Ralph. I understand, Ralph answered. My phone number is on the brochure. Let me know as soon as you decide, because Ginger is very popular snake. As we walked up 7800 Street, to our apartment, Emily didn't stop, didn't stop jabbering for a minute. My dad was just the opposite. He was quiet. His eyebrows were all wrinkled. His mouth was turned into a frown. Look, Emily, my dad said, when we reached our building, I don't want to disappoint you, but we can't have Ralph's Reptile Show at your party. I glanced at the prices and it's too expensive for us. Emily stopped in her tracks and said, showed in her mouth. She stared at my dad like he had just told her the sky was falling. But daddy, she cried, I'm only going to turn seven once in my whole life. Well, sweetie, my mom said, we can still have a nice party for you. Emily's eyes filled with tears. She pulled open the front door and ran through the hallway to the elevator. I saw her push the elevator button like she was hammering a nail with her thumb. I felt sorry for the elevator button, and my mom felt sorry for Emily. She wants that party so badly, she whispered to my dad. I wish we could afford it, he said, but we can. We rode up the elevator in silence, except the sound of Emily sniffling. When we got to our apartment, my dad opened the door, and Cheerio came running out to greet us. Even his wagon tail didn't cheer Emily up. As I was petting Cheerio, I remembered how Emily had stood up for me when I wanted to keep him, and my dad had said no. Suddenly, I felt something surprising in the pit of my stomach, and it had nothing to do with wanting a pepperoni pizza. What I wanted was to help my sister. Now, how weird is that? All right, so this is chapter one of the book, Here's Hank. I'll be back with chapter two tomorrow. I want you to think about this question. You can write it down, send me your response, uh, how, you so, how you so see fit, either on Instagram or Classroom, uh, Google Classroom. Have you ever wanted something so bad, but the means to get it were not there for you to get? Did you want a toy, did you want a bike, you no know, pair of shoes, anything, but your parents just said no for reasons that you can't control. So think about that, give me your answer, and I'll check in with you guys a little bit later. All right, enjoy the rest of your day.